Hey everyone, in this video I will go in depth on how to handle all of Yozora's moves. This fight puts your Kingdom Hearts 3 combat knowledge to the test, similar to what Lingering Will does in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. This fight is still new, so there is likely much more to learn on how to dodge and counter things, but this is what I know of right now. The game tries to give you a death screen tip here to calmly study Yozora's movements and actions. Funny enough, that tip is actually pretty helpful. I see many people frantically dodging around and guarding randomly, hoping for obvious openings to present themselves, but the key to learning this fight is to just stand still a lot and observe his attack patterns so that you don't take focus away from him by running around. This boss also has unusual openings that make you think more outside the box. It is unlikely for you to figure them all out on your own at first, so don't worry about that, but most players tend to figure out at least some to get by. Also, a sometimes lesser known mechanic of most humanoid bosses in this game, similar to Phantom Aqua in 0.2, is that they usually will always appear in front of wherever your camera is facing. Knowing this, you should always keep the camera facing away from the boundaries directly next to you. If you face it next to a boundary, it usually will make them teleport again into another spot to possibly blindside you. Anyway, let's start discussing his moveset. This first attack is a 9 laser move that loves to try to combo you if you get hit. The cue for this move is when he jumps up from a distance and says a quote, expect him to immediately do this, it's pretty reactable. The move has two different openings. If you guard only, you can wait until just when the sixth laser is fired and air step to him to attack, which will make him dodge away. Then, if you keep attacking, you'll still catch him. You need to be fast though, or he'll shoot three more lasers. The second opening is if you mix up guards and then for the last couple lasers, dodge roll towards him instead. You can get a clear opening at the end of the sixth laser, where he won't even try to dodge away. This is probably the intended punish, but the dodge rolls require better timing than guard. His sword charge move in first phase has two parts to it. First part is the initial charge, and after charging this he does a triple hit attack. One single hit, then two quick hits after a short delay. All three are guardable. Then he starts up a second charge always. This one just does a delayed single hit. If you try to interrupt either charges, he unleashes the attack sooner. In the second charge, this is your opening. If you utilize KH3's fast combo cancelling, you can throw out a physical attack next to him but quickly dodge or guard the attack to get a free opening, forcing him to jump backwards. Don't miss your punish though, if he lands after the bait and you don't hit him, he'll still launch the attack. So to recap, dodge the first charge triple attacks, then move towards him and bait him to attack. You can also air step into an attack while mashing guard or dodge right after, though this feels riskier. This next move often catches people off guard. When Yozora starts running at you at any point, this is the move he will attempt to hit you with. The grab itself is not guardable. His attack pattern is grab, attack, grab, grab. So the dodge for this is dodge roll, guard, dodge roll, dodge roll. As for the opening for this, he only appears to be open if you keep casting magic at him while he's running at you. Eventually, he'll jump away and be open. It's not really a safe nor a good opening to try to go for due to MP cost, specifically on critical mode, but it does exist. Now if you do get grabbed, you can survive the phase. First, he casts water magic immediately. Try to stay in place and dodge roll it because as soon as you dodge it, Yozora dashes at you with a 2 hit combo. He repeats this 2 more times and then does normal slashes a few times. Lastly, his final attack just needs to have well timed dodge rolls while running around. If you get hit by this final attack, the move immediately combos and ends, then you get your Keyblade back. Next, we have his laser slash combo that ends with a teleport sword attack. This move is easier than you think to deal with. First, you're better off guarding all the regular attacks. Dodge rolling works too, but is more precise. Then at the end, he teleports his sword next to you to try to combo you. He places it in a way where if you stand still, the sword is behind you and can't be guarded normally. So to deal with this, the easiest way is to use a guardian form with a 360 guard, such as ultimate form, dark light form, etc. This blocks the sword and creates an opening by staggering Yozora. You do not want to dodge roll spam the sword attack, as it can hit you on the dodge roll cooldown in between them. And if you don't stagger him, he teleport slashes you a bunch. He is open after the final teleport slashes, but it's far safer and better to stop the move sooner. If you don't have a 360 guard form active at the time, the second best way is to simply run backwards in time a guard. The sword only follows you for a bit, but when he says the battle quote, that's your cue to get ready to guard right after. The timing only takes a little practice, but if you're not feeling the backwards running, you can always try a single dodge roll into a guard or air slide into guard, but I feel those are less safe. This next move is a 6 slash attack that ends with another teleport sword attack. 
He does 6 slashes at a somewhat deceivingly slow pace, so mashing guard gets you hit usually. His 4th slash is a fast teleport attack, so that's the only one to be careful of. At the end of the move, just be prepared to deal with the teleport sword same as you did with his previous attack. This move is a slight bit tricky to react to, but if he teleports above you, you should expect it to always be this attack. If you ignore that opening with the teleport sword, he'll repeat this attack again, so it's best to get used to punishing it than letting him continue doing the move again. This next move is a little weird the way it works. First, he'll teleport a decent distance on the ground in front of you and do a sliding attack. Then, he teleports away and does a few slashes at the air. Next, a target appears on Sora and he slashes three times, and then afterwards he does the sliding attack again. Getting the punish on this attack is tricky to figure out, and most figure it out by accident of seeing the reprisals appear while guarding lasers. The trick is to run over next to him when he does the slashes at the air. This is where he will be during the target laser attack, and if you guard the third laser, you can reprise immediately into a stagger on him. This will cancel out his last sliding move that is harder to punish. The cue for when this move starts is usually telegraphed well by him being off the field for too long. If he's gone for long, you should expect this move to come. Fortunately, it's pretty reactable regardless. But as a fun note, you can hit him with magic when he appears for this move and stagger him into an opening. But the timing is strict and you need to be familiar with when this move appears. You can also parry his last sliding attack, but I don't recommend it. Moving on, his pyramid attack is a little weird as well to deal with, but it quickly becomes apparent how to avoid it. First, you need to throw out a dodge just before the lines of the side of the pyramid touch the base. After the first pyramid, Yozora will immediately attack out of it with a dash attack into slash. So as soon as you dodge, be prepared to guard. On the second pyramid, he will delay the attack a tad to mix you up, so just delay your guard as well. The third pyramid, he does a fast dash again into a delayed slash afterwards to end the move. He's punishable in this move during the second pyramid where he delays his attack, but he's protected while sitting in it from physical attacks, so only magic can hit him, as well as form explosions. Using Thundaga is your best bet, because it doesn't require you to target him if you're right next to the pyramid. Technically, you can form explosion him out of all three pyramids, but the second one is the safest and easiest. Next move you will start to do when you take off a good four bars or more is his tractor beam steel attack. This move sucks you in and steals your HP and items. It can even steal your Koopa coin, where you will use it and gain half health back when you beat him. The safest way to dodge this move is to simply glide around. He'll always appear in front of you if your camera is not facing directly into the invisible boundaries, so use that to your advantage to get a glide to the side. If you want to get through this move faster, you can air step into the beam and knock him out of it for a free punish as well, though he'll usually steal HP this way and also possibly items. You can also choose to guard plus reprisal him up close to knock him out of it too, but this also hits you. If you want an alternate dodge to glide, you can combine air step with double flights to bait him into a harder to track position, but this requires you keep away from the boundaries and have well-timed movements. Last phase one move he can do is the slow laser attack. This move tries to cross you up for guarding too fast soon as you see him, so you'll want to delay your guard. Then after the slow laser, he does more teleport lasers. Here you learn he does blue lasers, which are not guardable. So he'll do red laser, blue, three fast red lasers, a blue one, and a slow red one. The way to dodge the move is guard the slow laser, guard the second laser, dodge roll blue, guard, 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 dodge roll blue, and then slow guard. The punish of this move is when he's doing the first slow laser. You can approach next to him to get him to jump away and get an opening. The cue for when this move comes out is when he teleports into the air in place with a red laser appearing. It's tough to get used to it over other lasers, but it's learnable. As soon as you see it, you can quickly air step to him into a fast guard that forces him to end the laser and then he's open. If you're too slow, you'll get hit after air step ends and he will continue the move and likely kill you. So only attempt this if you're fast at reacting to it. Now we get into the tricky stuff. After you take out around half his HP, he'll start his desperation move. This is a long and challenging to learn move. First, when it begins, he'll do four lasers, two red, two blue. You get thrown into the air here fast, so your blue laser dodges will have to be air slides. However, after he does the second blue laser, if you're quick, you can air step to him and get a punish, which is rare for bosses to have openings during their DMs. Next part, whether or not you get the punish, he will do a new move I will call the fake out attack. This move has more than one pattern, so memorizing isn't as useful as just reacting to it. The trick to this move to not getting mixed up is he only attacks you when he's not directly in front of you. A common mistake I see is people run around during this move, but instead, stay still and see where he is. If he opens the move from the side, you need to guard. 
The second part of this move is the same. If he teleports in the center, he will fake you out, so just wait until he teleports slightly out of place for an easy time to guard. The only weird exception to this rule is the pattern where he aggressively attacks from the side with quick lasers on the first attack. This means the second attack will need to be guarded quickly afterwards, as you won't have much reaction time to it, and it can go behind you if not against a wall. Fortunately, the animation on the first attack is a dead giveaway, and the timing is not that strict to guarding the second attack. The next move for the DM is more lasers. He will do blue into two reds and then repeat. He will do it one more time as well, so four sets of it. To easily dodge this, just dodge roll the blue laser and quickly guard the red lasers. Make sure you're reacting to the blue laser and not trying to predict it so it doesn't catch you during a roll. The fight gives you enough time to reaction dodge blue lasers. Now we move on to the next segment of the DM, which is the Gigas Mech Attack. There are many ways to handle this, and I likely don't know all of them yet, but the easiest way to do this if you have full MP is to whip out Ariel and quickly go into her finisher. You won't take any damage this way, and she'll wipe out all the Gigas for you. If you don't have full MP but still have some, you can also take out the red Gigas with Thunder. I find it best to bait and dodge roll the first set of mechs, and then you can Thunder all the ones that spawn in the final wave. You may need to turn off Magic Lock-On for this strat. You can also try to glide up high around the arena, though I don't know if this is 100% safe, and you need to take sharp turns when they get close to not get hit. I also love a strat of dodge roll baiting the first wave, and then baiting all the final wave to dash towards you at once, so you can air slide through them and then dodge the final lingering mech. After all the Gigas are dead from either crashing into walls or your magic, Yozora will reappear for a slow dash attack, just guard or dodge. When you get past this move, you enter into the next phase of the DM. He opens this with a physical attack into blue lasers. You can either guard into a quick dodge roll or guard into reprisal for iframes on the blue lasers. Do whichever you prefer. Next, he'll do a clone attack which you must guard. He follows it up with a teleport sword, same as his first phase attacks that have it. Dodge it the same as usual, and then keep guarding his clones. If you were observant, you'd probably realize he's open here after guarding the teleport sword, same as the rest of the fight. You can't immediately attack him though, or you'll get shredded by the clones, but he waits long enough for the clones to end where you can get the punish in. So even though this is a long DM so far, you get two openings of damage up to this point. If you miss this punish, the DM gets much trickier, because then he keeps clone attacking you with blue lasers, so you have to keep dodging into guards, and then gravity brings you up again. It's best to get a handle on the teleport sword punish than to try learning this extra pattern, in my opinion. For the last part of the DM, he'll send a ton of clones at once, so quickly guard, and then the ball will become an explosion that you want to avoid. This part tries to throw you for a loop, because Yozora starts attacking you from behind and the front to push you into the explosion. If you're not at 1 HP, just jump into the fireball explosion and heal after if you don't want the chance dying dodging the clones. But if you intend to dodge the clones too, you need to do something different and turn the camera completely around to see the clones coming from behind and dodge roll them. Guarding isn't recommended because you still move towards the explosion. So how you dodge this part is he does 4 attacks from the front, 1 quick from behind, 1 in front, delay into 2 in front, 2 slashes from behind, then three in front, and then you just dodge the fireball at the end. Now that we are finally past the DM, all we have left are phase two attacks, which are mostly familiar alterations of phase one attacks. First attack he'll open with after the DM if you didn't over damage him is his armor physical attack. This move is tricky to deal with, but if you want to be safe, you can guard all the way through it with decently timed guards. The pattern is the same every time, where he does a couple fake outs from the front, but then starts attacking from the sides. At first they're small amounts of hits, but then they get progressively longer. If you want to break his armor, you can do a few different things. If you use Ariel, she can shred armor really well, or if you quickly shot lock onto him as he first appears. If you don't have the resources for these though, you can do some guard countering. This game lets you guard into a reprisal, but cancel the reprisal fast into another guard, which nearly fully iframes you while dealing damage to his armor. The only hard part is you would need to learn the timing of the patterns to know when to start guards so he doesn't catch you on cooldown. For reference, my strat here is to guard, guard counter, guard counter, guard counter, guard counter, and then guard counter, and if you need to do more, you can keep doing it. But usually those first few will break his armor. This next move is an extended version of his DM's fake out attack. This time, he'll do three patterns. As said during the DM, these are all reactable and readable. Don't fall for his center fakeouts. After he does three of these in a row, he'll either go into another attack, or he'll do a weird slow single slash attack, which if he does, that's your opening after this move. 
As an interesting note for this move, in this phase he'll cycle through all possible patterns. So there he started from the front. And then in the next one, that means he cannot start in front, so he'll start from the left or right. So that time it was the right, and it also is the fast pattern he gave you too, so you had to do another quick guard there. And then in this last one, he will always be on the left. He can mix them up, but he will only do one from each angle. Next, we have the blue sword charge, which is a different version of his first phase red sword charge. This time, if you see him stray charging, he'll do a single quick slash again, but instead of two quick slashes after, he'll do two teleport slashes delayed. It's easy to fall for those, they're unreactable, but telegraphed. Since these are blue slash attacks, they're unguardable, so just dodge roll. After the two teleport slashes, he'll do three slashes at the air, which should be your cue that he's doing target slashes. But since they're blue, you need to dodge them with rolls. Then finally, he'll do one more blue sword charge, where you will either have to dodge a delayed slash, or you can try to get the opening. To get the punish, bait him to attack as you did in phase 1. This time though, you cannot attack into guard. You'll have to attack into a dodge, but otherwise this works the same. This next move is a variant of the previous. Just like in phase 1, he can instead do the sliding attack into the target lasers. This time though, when he's doing the target lasers, he will mix you up with an attack in between them. There are two reasonable ways to handle this. One dodges it safely, while the other can open up a punish. To dodge safely, just dodge roll the first two targets as normal, and then guard into a dodge roll for the last one. Be prepared to guard again, as he'll do another sliding attack after. If you intend to punish, you can reprisal the attack you guard to iframe through the blue laser and punish him before his sliding attack goes off. The timing is tricky though. Lastly, he can still do his tractor beam item steal in this phase, but now it only goes off once. You also can't punish it after, as he immediately teleports away, so you'd have to punish it during the move. And there you have it. These are all his patterns and moves that I know of and how to dodge them all. All of his moves are either reactable or telegraphed, which makes him a really fun yet still hard super boss due to the sheer amount of moves he can do. Hopefully this guide helps you learn some alternate ways to dodge that you may feel more comfortable with. As always, thanks for watching.